in this week uh, we are going to discuss uh, the model on uh, functions of several random variables. In the last model we discussed uh, more than uh, one random variable together that form a random vector and uh, we discuss the joint distribution of uh, n dimensional random variables. Now, in this model we are going to discuss uh, functions of uh, random variables. In this topic uh, we are going to discuss uh, three aspects. Uh, one is uh, the distributions of uh, functions of several random variables. Then the second lecture we are going to discuss order statistics. This is also a one special uh, type of uh, functions of uh, several random variables. Third, uh, we are going to discuss uh, conditional distribution. The way we discussed uh, conditional uh, probability of an event, uh, we are going to discuss uh, conditional distributions uh, when we discuss uh, several random variables and followed uh, we are going to discuss uh, random sum. So, these are all the three topics which we are going to cover it in this model in functions of several random variables. The first lecture is on uh, distributions of uh, functions of several random variables. In any random experiment, we create uh, n random variables, but later when we start solving the problem, so we may feel uh, we need uh, some more random variables which is other than what we have started in the beginning. We can always create a new random variable from the scratch by the definition of random variable, then we can get the n dimensional random variable but uh, it is easy to create a new set of random variable with the help of the earlier set of random variable which we have already created. That means, uh, we can create uh, some sort of a composite function of random variables such a way that uh, we will land up the new set of random variables. In that case, our interest is to find out what is the distribution of uh, the new set of random variables. When we know the distribution of uh, the earlier set of random variables, that means uh, through the distribution of the earlier set of random variables, we are going to find the distribution of a new set of random variables. When I use the word uh, earlier set of random variables and the new set of random variables, I am using the notation called uh, the earlier set of random variables is x1, x2, xn. That means, each one is a random variable, we have a n random variables together jointly. Therefore, this is a n dimensional random variable. The new set of random variable I say y 1, y 2, y sub x k. That means, uh, the new set of uh, random variable need not be the same size of the earlier set of random variable. So, we know the distribution of uh, this random variable that is known. We are going to find out what is the distribution of uh, y 1, y 2, y k when we know the distribution of uh, x 1, x 2, x n. For that, uh, what we are going to do? We are going to create uh, the relation of uh, y i's in terms of uh, x i's. 
that means uh, y i you can think of uh, it is a composite function with the n random variables. Similarly, you can think of uh, y 2 as a another random variable which is a function of uh, the x 1, x 2, x n random variable. Like that uh, we have a uh, k random variables that means uh, we obviously x i is are the random variable y i is uh, i is equal to 1 to k are going to be random variable provided uh, the function g i is has to be Borel measurable function. So, we make the assumption g i is where i is equal to 1 to k or Borel measurable functions. The same thing what we have done it in the one dimensional random variable. When x is a random variable, g is a Borel measurable function, then y is equal to g of x that is also going to be a random variable the same concept we are using for the several random variables. Therefore, when x i is are known with the distribution and g i's are Borel measurable functions, then y i's are going to be the random variables. Therefore, y 1, y 2, y k is the k dimensional random variables. The question is how to find the distribution of y i's that I am going to give it as the result. Suppose x i is x 1, x 2, x n or discrete type random variables and the joint probability mass function is known. <coughs> I am discussing the concept of distributions of uh, several random variable for uh, discrete type random variable first, then later I am going to discuss for the continuous type random variable. Since we know the joint probability mass function of uh, x i s, you can directly write down the probability mass function of y 1, y 2 and y k is jointly that is same as probability of you can replace a y 1 by g 1 as a function of x 1, x n that takes a value small y 1, y 2 takes a value small y 2 that means uh, g 2 x 1 x 2 x n that takes a value y 2 and so on. And uh, for the g k of uh, x 1 x 2 and so on x n that takes a value y k that is same as all the summation of uh, the probability of x 1 takes a value small x 1, x 2 takes a value small x 2 and so on, x n takes a value small x n such that all the x i's x 1, x 2, x n belonging to R n not only that. g 1 of x 1, x 2, x n that is same as y 1. Similarly, g 2 of uh, x 1, x 2, x n that is same as uh, y 2 and so on g k of uh, x 1, x 2, x n that is same as uh, y k. If you make a summation over uh, these conditions 
that means uh, all the x is belonging to Rn and uh, G1 of x1, x2, xn that is same as y1, G2 of x1, x2, xn that is same as y2. Like that uh, Gk of uh, x1, x2, xn that is same as yk. Finding out the joint probability of uh, x1 takes a value small x1, x2 takes a value small x2 and so on xn takes a value x that is going to be the probability of uh, the random variable y1 takes a value small y1 similarly the random variable y2 takes a value small y2 and so on the random variable yk takes a value yk so this is a probability mass function for k dimensional random variable so this is the joint probability mass function of uh, k dimensional uh, random variables y1, y2, so on, yk. So, this is the way one can find the distribution of uh, functions of uh, several random variable when uh, the random variables are of the discrete type and uh, g's are Borel measurable functions. So, that uh, y is also going to be a discrete type random variable one can get the joint distribution in this way. Let us go for one simple example how it works. The example 1, let x1, x2 be a two dimensional discrete type random variables with joint joint probability mass function which is given by x1 x2 the possible values of x1 is a minus 1 0 and 1 and the possible values of x2 that is 0 and 1. The joint probability mass values for possible values of x1 and x2 this is 1 by 7 and this is also 1 by 7 and this is 2 by 7 and this is 1 by 7. 1 by 7 and again 1 by 7. If you sum all the values, it is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 plus 2, 7, summation is 1 and if you make a row sum and a column sum, you will get the marginal distribution of x1 and x2. Now, we are going to define the new random variables that is uh, y1 as a fun g1 of uh, x1 comma x2 that is x1 plus x2 that is y1. We are defining a second random variable as a g2 of x1 comma x2 that is a product of x1 x2. x1 x2 are of the discrete type random variable and y1 is x1 plus x2 y2 is equal to x1 into x2 therefore, you will get a y1 and y2 are discrete type random variables. Now, our interest is to find out the joint probability mass function of y1 comma y2. Since it is a discrete type, you can make a table. So, y1, y2 since uh, x1 takes a value minus 1 0 1 x2 takes a value 0 and 1 y1 takes a value minus 1 0 1 and 2 so minus 1 0 1 and 2 similarly one can find uh, the possible values of y2 that is a uh, minus 1 0 and 
now you can uh, start filling up uh, suppose uh, y1 takes a value minus 1 y2 takes a value minus 1 what are all the possibilities uh, in the x1 x2 so that uh, the y1 is going to be minus 1 y2 is going to be minus 1 there is no way you will get uh, this possibility therefore the probability of empty set is 0 whereas uh, when y1 is minus 1 y2 is equal to 0 that is possible with the probability 1 by 7 similarly y1 is minus 1 y2 is plus 1 that is not possible therefore the probability is 0 similarly you can fill up other elements 1 by 7 this is 2 by 7 you can verify 0 this is 0 2 by 7 again there is no possibility therefore the probability is 0 there is no possibility this is 1 by 7 again you can cross check whether this is going to be the whole summation is a double summation over y1 y2 has to be 1 1 by 7 1 by 7 2 by 7 2 by 7 1 by 7 therefore the addition is 1 here also you can find uh, the marginal distribution of uh, y1 and y2 from the joint distribution so since this is the discrete type with the two dimensional random variable and again we make a y1 y2 as a two dimensional random variable we are getting the joint probability mass function of y1 y2 suppose if it is a n dimensional and uh, y's are k dimensional still you can able to find uh, as long as k is uh, less than or equal to n as long as k is less than or equal to n you can get the joint probability mass function so that can be written in the previous slide k has to be less than or equal to n you can get the joint probability mass function of uh, y is where i is running from 1 to k this is a very easiest uh, example now we will go for the little uh, different example example 2 let x be a random variable which is a binomial distributed with the parameters uh, n comma p and uh, another random variable y that is also binomial distributed with the parameter n comma p same p and uh, I make the assumption assume that the random variable x and y are independent I assume that x and y are uh, independent random variables the question is find the distribution of x plus y find the distribution of x plus y it is easy to <coughs> do because uh, x is a discrete type random variable y is a discrete type random variable and we have not supplied the joint probability mass function of uh, x and y whereas uh, we made the assumption both are independent random variable so you can use the independent concept uh, if two random variables are independent then the joint probability mass function is same as product of uh, probability mass functions of x and y so you can use that concept therefore I can directly compute the distribution of x plus y I will take z as x plus y since x is a binomial distribution the possible values are 0 1 2 and n and y is also binomial with the possible values are 0 1 2 and so on till n therefore the possible values of z is going to be 0 1 
and so on till 2 n. So, one can find the probability mass function of the random variable z for z takes a value 0, 1, 2 and so on till 2 n. So, this is a probability mass function which we are going to find which is going to be a positive and all other points it is going to be 0. So, we will be worried about uh, when z takes a value 0, 1, 2 and so on till 2 n. So, this is same as I can replace z by x plus y takes a value small z that is same as if I introduce a one dummy index i that is a probability of x takes a value i and y takes a value z minus i and all possible values of i I can get the probability of x plus y is equal to z. I am just replacing probability of x plus y is equal to z that is same as for all possible values of i with the summation the joint probability of x takes a value i y takes a value z minus i that is going to be same as the probability of x plus y is equal to z. I am not going to write uh, what are all the possible values of uh, i very clearly because uh, for some i the y may not be within the range of 0 to n or uh, x cannot be in the range of uh, 0 to n. Therefore, whenever the x takes a value is 0 to n as well as y takes a value is 0 to n then only you will have a some sort of joint probability mass function otherwise uh, those probabilities are going to be 0 therefore uh, I am not going to write what is the possible values of i. I leave it as it is. Now I am going to use uh, the independent uh, concept that means uh, the probability of x takes a value i and uh, y takes a value z minus i that is same as since these two random variables are independent I can make it a probability of x takes a value i multiplied by probability of uh, y takes a value z minus i that is what I made the assumption these two random variables are independent otherwise uh, I cannot proceed further. So, either to solve this problem I should have given both the random variables joint probability mass function for x comma y or I would have made the assumption x and y are independent then only I can able to find the distribution of x plus y. So, this is same as summation over i probability of x takes a value i probability of y takes a value z minus i. Now, you can use a binomial distribution probability mass function for x as well as y. That is what uh, we have not discussed many problems in the earlier uh, models when we started discussing the standard distributions because uh, in the whole course uh, we will be using those distribution again and again. So, now those who remember uh, probability mass function of uh, binomial distribution you can directly write uh, that is uh, n c i p power i 1 minus p power n minus i. This is a probability mass function for a binomial distribution with the parameters n comma p. Similarly, you can write a probability mass function of y that is a n c z minus i p power z minus i 1 minus p power n minus z minus i. You can go for simplification. This is p power i, this is p power z minus i. With you can take the p power z outside. Similarly, n minus z plus i and this is 1 minus p power n minus i. So, you can do some simplification and after simplification you can get the result that is 2 n z p 
power z 1 minus p power n minus z. Yes, sorry. It is a 2n minus z. The way I said the p power i p power z minus i that is killed, you will get p power z. Similarly, 1 minus p power n minus z minus i, if you simplify, you will get 1 minus p power 2n minus z. The only thing is uh, the summation over i n c i with the multiplication n c z minus i that is same as uh, 2 n c z that is the result which we are using summation of n c i multiplied with n c z minus i that is same as uh, 2 n c z. So, this is a probability mass function of the random variable z and the possible values of z is 0, 1, 2 and so on till 2 n. By seeing the probability mass function which is greater than 0 in this value, 0 otherwise, you can conclude the random variable z which is also binomial distributed with the parameters. You have to map the probability mass function of this with the probability mass function of binomial distribution, then you will conclude the, that is parameter is 2 n comma p. So, this is the use of a named or standard or common distribution. You do not know the distribution of z, you are finding the distribution of z. After you get the probability mass function, this is same as a probability mass function of a binomial distribution. Therefore, we conclude uh, z is uh, also binomial distributed with the parameters 2 n comma p. Now, one can discuss uh, some uh, what if scenario. Suppose, uh, x takes the binomial distribution with the parameter n comma p, whereas uh, y takes a binomial distribution with uh, some other parameter instead of n. Uh, Suppose, you treat uh, some other positive integer m, but the next parameter is same p. Let me write. Suppose, x is binomial distribution with the n comma p and y is binomial distribution with some other parameter m comma p and again I am making the assumption both the random variables are uh, independent then also you will get a binomial distribution with the parameters n plus m comma p. That means, uh, if you have a two independent binomial distribution with a different uh, n and m, whereas the, the probability of success in each Bernoulli trial p is same for both the random variables, then the sum is also going to be a binomial distribution with the parameters sum of those first parameter comma the second parameter is p. That means, uh, this can be extended for any n random variables. Suppose, uh, each random variable is binomial distributed with uh, some number, some positive integer with p and are all are going to be a different number for first parameter, then the sum is going to be again binomial distribution with the sum of first parameters with second parameters p. So, this can be generalized into any n mutually independent random variables. Since we have a two random variable, we are using the word independent random variable. Once you have more than two random variables for any n mutually independent random variables, each one is binomial distributed with the same probability of success uh, p with the different parameters in the first one, then uh, the sum is also going to be binomial distribution.